Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Um, without further ado, who's this week's first question? Right, from? first question is from Paul. They say, hi, Alex, Ollie and Manon. Is it bad to transport a bike with hydraulic brakes in a non-upright position? E dot G dot, laying on its side in a car in case of air from the brake master cylinder goes into the brake lines. They say, I've done it a few times, but all seems to be fine. Is this something they need to worry about? I've never had an issue putting it in a car, do that no. all the time, flying with it, never had an issue. You, 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 you know, you brake system, if it's set up properly, um, it's a sealed system, so it should be fine. Yeah, if you do have a problem with your brakes, by doing that is an indicator that you should take it to your bike shop and get the brakes, brakes bled. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Uh, next question is from Mr. John Dope, who says, Hi Alex Nolly, I have a tyre that runs uh, tubeless and it has a really small puncture and the tubeless milk sealant is leaking out and won't seal that, won't seal. Is it an indication that I need to replace my tire? On the face of it, yes. Firstly, I'm upset because I don't like it when people call tubeless sealant milk. I've said it before, I'll say it again. However, um, what it generally is indicating is if it's not sealing up, it's because the hole in the tire is too large for the system to work correctly. So you've got a few different options. Option one, Add more sealant in the hopes that it plugs the hole up and you'll be good to go again. Option two, remove the tire, clean it up and put a patch on the inside of the tire. Keep your tire in um, good use, get lots of life out of it. Third option is simply take the tire off, remove all the tubeless sealant, patch the tire up and run it with an inner tube and you should be good to go for plenty of extra miles. Or mm. fourth option yeah. is to use um, a plug. Oh, yeah. Plug the hole as well, um, tubeless plugs. Uh, Check them out. Yeah. Very thing. Good option. Uh, next question is from Jim Boynton, who says, Hi guys, I'm new to cycling and would like to know the difference between power meters, speed, and cadence sensors. Um, okay, so cadence sensors, this is dead easy. Cadence sensors simply only measure your cadence, which is the rate at which your the speed cranks. at which your cranks turn. Measured um, in RPM. Yeah. Measure, revolutions per minute. Yeah, just mm. like a car. Yeah. Uh, speed sensor just measures your speed and is attached onto the wheel. This is different from a GPS computer, which measures your speed via GPS and tracking your distance point to point. Speed sensor on the wheel is actually a bit more accurate. Yeah. Um, and well, it's accurate if you put in the correct tire size. Yeah. Yeah. And a power meter, it, it measures the amount of force that you produce and push through the pedals. So how does the power meter work? So it measures the force you exert, it knows how fast the cranks are turning, and then because it knows the crank, so the, the crank length, so the length of the lever, you can then automatically calculate that and give you your power output in watts. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, simple. Next question is from Matt underscore what's next. They say, according to my local bike shop and my measurements, I should be riding a 55 centimetre frame due to his inseam. Frames are normally 54 or 56. It was given advice to go for a 54 and adjust using a saddle position and stem length. Um, they don't feel cramped on a 54, but they're just wondering whether that was right. Should they go up a size, down a size, what to do if they're in between? So I think it's always going to vary between lots of different brands. Some bright brands in a 54 might be a little bit smaller than some other brands, which might size up a little bit larger. But seeing as you've been to the bike shop, I would say take their advice because they've seen you on a bike and have got a feeling for how your position will be. Yeah, I would go with that as mm. well. I think, so for example, in the Orbea that I ride, it's a 55 and that size fits me. Uh, whereas the Pinarello I ride is a 56 and that fits me. So, you know, yeah. it varies from brand to brand. Good point. Uh, Martin uh, Sail Whiskey has a question saying, he's just seen the 20 kilogram vest video we did where we made Rory wear the 20 kilogram <laughs> vest. Poor Rory. I know. Sorry about that. Um, and he's wondering, would it make sense to, to ride with ankle weights to train your leg muscles? I did this when I started to ride my road bike um, two years ago and everyone was laughing at me. I think I benefited from it, but it might have been a placebo. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, especially when you're riding along on a flat road, cruising, you've got your cadence all turning, because I think each weight on your leg is going to act as a counterbalance for the other one. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact when you're already traveling. Now, additional mass added onto your bike when you're cycling uphill or accelerating or braking, I do think it's going to have an impact. Yeah, it will have uh, uh, the impact of additional mass, but I think putting the weight there in that specific place won't have an impact as 
yeah. what you're saying. And, yeah. and that's because, yeah, when one, the one weight <laughs> yeah. is at the top position and has the most potential energy, yeah. the other one's at the lowest position, but they constantly are counterbalancing yeah. each other out. I think it's so, just going to make your bike quite horrible to ride. Yeah, plus if one of the ankle weights moves and moves around a bit, it's going to slam into your... Yeah. Frame and components and, and stuff. I think we're just adding a load of complications in that we do don't it. need. Yeah. Next question in is from Andrew Bay. He says, currently riding on GP5000s, they're all worn out and planning to purchase new ones, but the local bike shop says they're delayed, but they might get the new tyres in July. What are the dangers and drawbacks riding on tyres that are worn out? Blowout. Well, that could like be the worst. Catastrophic extreme. failure yeah. of the tyre if it blows out. I mean, the worst case scenario is you go out and you're just probably more likely to get a puncture and you just have a, an, an annoying ride. I mean, what's yeah. more annoying than a puncture? Yeah. Where you just, your ride is propagated Grip by punctures. Grip slightly reduced on worn out tyres as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> One, what, so if the tread is still there, if you're not down to the carcass yeah. and the tread is still there, the worn out tyre might actually be a bit faster. Oh. It could be. Because the the rolling resistance Maybe that's can another be, video we need to can make. be a bit less. Oh, worn out tyres faster. Yeah, but it... If if you know if it's danger if it's past the wear point and the puncture protection is compromised or you've got carcass showing you know a blowout can be catastrophic. So. It's not what anybody wants. No. Um, right. Okay. Final question for this week's tech link is from Robert Bont. They say hi GCN team. Great videos. Saw a video of someone complaining of the lifespan of their Dura Ace disc brakes, um, leading to exceptionally high running costs when all these components are wearing out. What is your experience riding these higher end group sets? Is running cost a topic that running cost? Sorry, is a ve is a topic that rarely comes up mm. when considering upgrade components. So yeah, they want to know about the running costs of top tier stuff. Okay, well the biggest thing is what are the components that wear out? So you're looking at cassettes, you're looking at chains, chain rings, and then you're looking at your brakes. Yeah, chain rings last a really long time though. I mean, yeah. that's, they do last a real, especially if you keep your bike clean. Um, and cassettes do as well, to be fair. It's mainly chains that you're going to be going through. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as you look after stuff. With regards to disc brakes as well, you're kind of looking at... It, a large part of it depends on how often you clean it again, but yeah. also the pads you use. So, you know, metallic pads are going to last a little longer than, yeah. like, organic pads. So maybe experiment with that. But in terms of running costs, if you want to halve your running costs, get all tape if, yeah. you, if you were thinking of Dura Ace. Yeah, I think the, the main sort of takeaway point is that just because the top tier components are more expensive doesn't mean they're lasting longer. You're not going to invest more money because it's going to outperform in terms of how long the stuff's going to last. The premium that you're paying for is in terms of performance. And weight. And weight. Yeah, yeah you can hit lighter. There you go. Hopefully that answers your question. If we haven't got to your question, apologies. Hopefully we'll get to it in the coming weeks. And if you have any burning questions that you want the answer to, get them in the comments section down below. We'll pick them out and answer them in another tech clinic that's coming out soon. Right, see you later. Bye.